let's paint our fabric. I have a couple pieces that I have prepared ahead of time. This one is just on felt, so if you don't have any backing fabric, you can just do it on the felt. And this one is on one of my regular, you know, old sheets. And I'm going to be using jacquard fabric paint because this is something I enjoy using. Of course, you can use whatever you have on hand. Just keep in mind how it might react with water and what you're going to be using it for later. Whenever I'm going to paint, I like to have some cheesecloth or some gauze handy because I use it instead of paper towels or a rag to sop up my excess paint. And then when I go to embellish my piece, I've got some cheesecloth in something that is going to match my color family. I have two pieces of fabric I'm going to paint, and before I do that, I am going to get them wet. I'm also gonna wear gloves because otherwise my hands get stained real quick and easy, and it lasts, as some of you might already know, for days. <laughs> now you can spray your fabric with water. I like to just put it in my tub and get it all nice and wet. If you're using upholstery fabric, you're going to find that it is not going to absorb the paint or the water quite as well. It's probably got some kind of repellent thing on it. So the reason for wetting your fabric first is so that it will help the paint or dye, whatever it is you're going to use, sink into the fabric a little better rather than just sitting on top of the fabric. I think everything is pretty wet. I can add more, but at least that gets me started. Now the Dynaflow fabric paint is very thin. This is very watery. You can still dilute it somewhat, but it really sinks into the fabric really nicely. The textile paint is much thicker, so I always add water when I'm using that. See already I'm getting messy fingers. All right, I'm gonna add some water to this one, and this one, and maybe a little bit here. We can always go on full strength later. I rarely measure anything like this, but I think they say 25%. Now, if you're using acrylic paint, you can dilute it with water, but I actually prefer to use a fabric medium. I find that works better. Now, is there a plan of attack with getting the color on this fabric? Absolutely not. You might decide that you wanna put your darker paint on the heavy patterns and your lighter paint on the lighter colors. You might decide to blend where your seams are going to be. So I think I'm going to take my reds. And if I decide, oh, that's too much, I can add some water. Take my cheesecloth and push it back. Now your dark fabric is not going to pick up quite as much color. It will change, but not as much, unless you're using an op opaque paint. And I'm just gonna kind of push that back a little bit, get a little bit more water in there. There's no rhyme or reason. If you've been doing a lot of fabric painting, you might have more experience than I do. That's okay, because this is just a brave exploration as far as I'm concerned. If you like uh, getting color on fabric, I do have a lot of videos showing the different ways you can do that with a lot of supplies you probably already have on your shelf. Tone that red down so I'm not super red, more like a reddish brown. This is another time that you just tell your perfectionist that she is not welcome to join the party. She can just take off because you don't need her help. Things are gonna dry differently. They're going to dry lighter. I love this color combination. This is this is yummy. My earthy colors, some sparkle in there. That's a lot of sparkle. And remember, you can do you know go light once, and then when it dries, if you think you want to color some more spots in, you know maybe you don't want some of the patterns to show quite so much. Well, then you go over it a second time. But most of the time, by the time I'm done with this painting and letting it dry, I'm usually in a pretty happy place. I'm just gonna get some more sparkle in here because who doesn't like a little bit of bling, right? So this is turning definitely into a, a reddish brown. Now you could also grab your stencils and apply them right now, or you could wait till your next layer and add some stenciling then. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of water, gonna spread that around. And what's gonna happen if we add some of this ochre in? All right, and if I feel like that's too much in some places, well, let's just get it on our cheesecloth. But that is definitely unifying all the pieces we have there. If you feel like you want it to go back to lighter in places, just add some more water. Come back in with your cloth and you can be removing it there. And I never feel like it's wasted paint when I'm sopping it up with a piece of cheesecloth because it's not wasted. I'm going to use a cheesecloth. Who doesn't love painted cheesecloth, right? I kind of want to get some dark sections in here. We've got some variety. 
but I'm not trying to get it in any particular place. I'm just kind of wanting everything to blend together. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put this over on its tray so it can start to dry. I have this larger one here and I'm gonna just go ahead and get the fabric wet. And you can see here, I've got some upholstery fabric here and the water is beating up. It will eventually soak in, but it's just good to be aware of the fact that if you're using some upholstery material, you're going to get different color saturation, which may be an issue for you or maybe it's not. The painting goes so fast and then the waiting for it to dry takes so long, but you're really gonna wanna do that. Let it dry completely, no matter how you have colored it, then you're gonna wanna hit it with a hot iron, warm iron, iron it, throw it in the dryer, you could do that. Don't think, just get the color down. All you're trying to do is unify it so it looks like it all came out of the same dye pot. I've got a lot of paint down there that hadn't been diluted, so I'm gonna get my water on it. Now your way of painting fabric may be completely different from mine, and that's okay. I don't like to follow rules when it comes to this sort of thing. I like to follow rules when it comes to driving and making sure I'm safe, but if you watch any of my other videos about coloring fabric, you'll see, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's what art is, right? It's those experiments that we try. Well, what happens if I do this? Well, what if I did that? And sometimes it takes us someplace wonderful and sometimes we're like, eh, well, I'm not gonna do that again. But you're not gonna know unless you try. If you try and it doesn't work out, you're like, okay, I'm not gonna do that again. Now, when I have a solid dark color like that, that's where I really like to bring in my metallic colors. Just kind of gives them something different. For a long time, I had these fabric paints on the shelf and I didn't use them because you know they weren't cheap paints and I didn't know what I was doing and I, I felt like it was just, you know, I was gonna ruin them. I was going to ruin whatever I used them on and it was gonna be a waste of money and a waste of time. Well, how am I gonna get any better at it if I don't try? I'm not. So that's, that's my art advice again and again and again. You know, you're not gonna get any better at it. You're not gonna learn how to, you know, learn any of those shortcuts, any of that kind of stuff if you don't take the first step and try. I don't like the straight lines on the paint. Should have some nice sparkle. All right, now we're gonna let this one dry too. Okay, here they are both nice and dry. And as you can see, they have dried a lot lighter than it looked like while I was applying the paint. Now they are ready for me to start stitching. I have links to the paints down below in the description box. Hope you give this a try and have some fun 